Hi again, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Ard from my beautiful pool. It was such a lovely day outside. I thought, why not go outside and work? Yeah, it's great. So here we go. Today's lesson is called Use and Make Line Plots. The essential question is, how can you read and interpret data in a line plot and use data to make a line plot? Let's find out. Let's unlock the problem together. Some students took a survey of the number of letters in their first names. Then they recorded the data in a line plot. Well, what's a line plot? I'm so glad you asked. A line plot uses marks to record each piece of data above a number line. It helps you see groups in the data. Let's find out what steps we need to take to make a line plot. How many students have six letters in their first names? Each X stands for one student. This is one student, this is one student, this is one student, one student, and so forth. The numbers show the number of letters in a name. Here's the label that tells us what these numbers mean. It says number of letters in our first names. So, three letters in their first name, four letters in their first name, five letters, six letters, seven letters, and eight letters. How many letters are in your first name? Is your number on this number line? Mine is. Mine would be right here above the eight. So if I was adding my data to this, I would put one more X right here because my first name has eight letters in it. Where would yours go? Great, good job. Now, we're gonna find the six on the number line. Ding, 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 there it is. The six stands for what, boys and girls? That's right, letters in their first name. There are how many X's above the six? So how many students have six letters in their first names? I heard you, good job. There are four X's above the six. So that means there are four students who have six letters in their first names. That means not with you guys included, of course, because we can't add all that data. All right, I went ahead and did a pretend lesson for us. We're gonna do something similar to this tomorrow in class, but let's do one more activity together. It says measure the height of four classmates to the nearest inch, combine your data with other groups, make a line plot to show the data you collected. Well, since we're not in class and we can't measure each other's heights right now, I went ahead and did a pretend set of data. First, we're gonna record the heights in the table. There are the heights, 48 inches, 49 inches, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, and 55 inches. That should cover most of you and your heights. Then here I put tally marks to represent how many students are each of those heights. Here is our number line. We're going to write a title below the number line to describe the line plot. Our title is Classmates Heights in Inches. Then we're going to write the number of inches in order from left to right above the title. So we start with the least number which is 48 the greatest number, which is 55, and we write them in order from least to greatest. 48, 49, all the way to 55. Then we draw X's above the number line to show each student's height. Well, we already have some X's here for us. All we need to do is click and drag, but first we must find out how many X's we need to put above the 48. Here we see the 48, there are five, so we need five X's over the 48. Okay. 
Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's above the 48. Let's look at the 49. We have how many x's that need to go above the 49? That's right, 2, because 2 students were 49 inches. Great. How many were 50 inches? Only one. So we put one X above the 50 inches. How many were 51 inches? That's right, three. So we need three X's above the 51. There were five, six students who were 52 inches. How many were 53? That's right, five. So we need five X's above the 53 to show five students were 53 inches tall. students were 54 inches tall. So we need two X's above the 54. And the last piece of data, we have 55 inches and there were one, two, three, four students who were 55 inches tall. And there is our line plots. Think about this math talk. Explain what the shape of the data tells you. Look at the shape of the data. What does that tell us? I wish you had a partner to talk to about it. Maybe you can talk to your parents. Ask them what the shape of this data tells us. It tells us that most of the students were between 51, 52, and 53 inches tall. That's where most of the students fell into that section of our line plot. Good. One more question for you boys and girls. Look at this line plot. How many students have one pet? There's the number of pets. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, how many had one pet? That's right, 1, 2, 3, 4. There were four students who have one pet. What number of pets do no students have? The four, right? There are no X's up here, which means there are no students who have four pets. Do more students have more than two or fewer than two pets? So do most of the students have more than two pets or fewer than two pets? Let's look at the data. Here are the two pets. Do we want to know how many have two pets? No. We want to know how many have more than two. One, two, three, four, five, six students have more than two pets. They either have three, four, or five. Then let's see how many have fewer than two. Not two, but fewer. So we have to count the zero and one pets. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, do more students have more than two pets or fewer than two pets? That's right. More students have fewer than two pets because there were seven that had fewer than two pets. There were six that had more than two pets. I think you're ready, boys and girls. We'll see you tomorrow in class, and we're going to have a fun, hands-on project to help you practice this skill. Go on and do your mini-assessment now. I'll see you tomorrow morning.